Actress Claudette Colbert is famous for her significant impact on classic movies, leaving a lasting impression on cinema. One could wonder, out of all her famous roles, which one was the most defining for her career? What makes her stand out from other actors of her time? Her unique ability to bring depth and realism to her characters makes her a notable figure among her colleagues. But what about your favorite memory or personal connection to this classic actress? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay with us as we share some interesting, surprising, and touching facts about this famous actress. Keep watching this video to learn more about the fascinating world of Claudette Colbert. Born in saint mandé France, she hailed from a wealthy family but moved to New York City at a young age. Growing up, she frequented theater performances with her mother, sparking her interest in acting. Though she initially pursued fashion design, she found her true calling in acting after joining the Art Students League and landing roles in stage productions. Her early stage experiences shaped her acting style, earning her recognition for her adaptability and natural talent. In 1927, she ventured into film with For the Love of Mike, marking the start of a successful film career. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, she starred in numerous hits, including It Happened One Night, which earned her an Academy Award for Best Actress. She seamlessly transitioned from silent films to talkies, captivating audiences with her charm and elegance. Despite her Hollywood success, she maintained a private personal life focusing on her craft. Her impact on cinema remained strong, solidifying her status as one of the greatest actresses of her time. In Torch Singer, she takes on the role of Sally Trent, a woman on a quest to find her daughter given up for adoption. At 04255, the character learns about a potential lead, a young girl who might be her, residing at 1695 Melrose Avenue. The film, produced by Paramount Pictures, was made at their studio located at 5555 Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, California. And since she went away, she initially declined the lead role of Anne Hilton, reluctant to portray a mother to two teenage daughters. With the intervention of gossip columnist Hedda Hopper, David O. Selznick eventually convinced her to embrace the part. The Bride Comes Home is one of the 700 Paramount productions from 1929-49 acquired by MC Universal in 1958 for TV distribution. The movie, featuring her as Jeanette Desmero, had its initial TV broadcast in Los Angeles on January 9, 1959, and has since been owned by Universal. The film was part of Turner Classic Movies' Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray Romantic Comedy Collection, released on DVD in 2011 and 2012. Her diverse roles in these films showcase her versatility and contribution to the film industry, overcoming initial reservations to portray compelling characters. The Paramount Productions, now under Universal's ownership, continue to be part of the cinematic history of this actress. Actress Claudette Colbert was offered the role of Hilde Johnson in His Girl Friday in 1939, but she turned it down. Rosalind Russell was cast instead. She was slated for the lead role of Margaret Channing in All About Eve in 1950 when she suffered a slipped disc while filming a violent scene in Three Came Home. The injury put her into traction. The role was then offered to Betty Davis, who had recently been released from Warner Brothers and was widely thought to be at the end of her career. It would become a legendary role for Davis, who was nominated for a Best Actress Oscar playing Margaret Channing. In The Sign of the Cross, she played Empress Papia. The scene where Papia bathes in milk was held up for a week, while Colbert finished The Phantom President in 1932. Claudette Colbert's career saw notable moments and choices that influenced Hollywood's landscape, including turning down significant roles and facing setbacks due to injuries. Her impact remains evident in the roles she portrayed and the decisions she made. After turning down an offer from RKO to direct and act after The Secret Fury in 1950, she starred as Jerry Jeffers in The Palm Beach Story. Alongside Joel McCrea and Mary Astor, she brought depth and charm to the character. Preston Sturges also had a memorable cameo as a crew leader carrying her luggage in a funny scene. The chemistry between her and the rest of the cast added layers of interest to the film's story, entertaining audiences with its clever dialogue and good timing. The movie's popularity went beyond the big screen with a radio version airing on the Screen Guild Theater. She showed her versatility by smoothly transitioning from film to radio, playing her role again with Rue D. Valley. Their performances brought listeners into the world of the Palm Beach story, showcasing once again her talent and appeal. 
In short, Claudette Colbert's role in the Palm Beach story, both on screen and on the radio, is a standout in her great career, showing her ability to entertain audiences in different ways with her charm and talent. Claudette Colbert starred alongside James Stewart in It's a Wonderful World, marking their only collaboration in a feature film. She played Edwina Corday in this notable production. In The Sign of the Cross, Colbert portrayed Empress Papia, sharing the screen with acclaimed actors like Frederick March and Charles Lawton. The film also featured Oscar nominees Miss Hour and Tom Tully. Colbert's role as Ellie Andrews in It Happened One Night was significant. Initially hesitant due to a past unfavorable experience, she ultimately agreed to the project, enticed by the prospect of a substantial paycheck. Despite initial reservations, she delivered a compelling performance. In No Time for Love, Claudette Colbert drove a 1942 Chrysler convertible, the last model before vehicle production stopped due to World War II. Throughout her career, she worked with Fred McMurray in seven films, The Gilded Lily, The Bride Comes Home, Made of Salem, No Time for Love, Practically Yours, The Egg and I, and Family Honeymoon. In Sleep, My Love, Colbert played Alison Cortland, alongside co-stars Don Amici and Robert Cummings. Her performances, whether behind the wheel of a 1942 Chrysler or sharing the screen with Fred McMurray, showcased her versatility in the world of cinema. Actress Claudette Colbert starred alongside Irving Bacon in seven films. These films included Happened One Night, Private Worlds, Remember the Day, Skylark, Since You Went Away, Guest Wife, and Family Honeymoon. In the film Cleopatra, Claudette Colbert portrayed the titular character. Despite her aversion to being photographed from her right side, this concern isn't evident in the movie. She appears from various angles throughout the film without any visible discomfort. One significant disappointment in Claudette Colbert's career was the shelving of a proposed movie about Joan of Arc at Warner Brothers in 1936. This film, to be directed by Anatole Litvak, was highly anticipated but never came to fruition. Claudette Colbert, known for her roles in classic films, took on the character of Cleopatra in the movie Cleopatra. In a notable scene, she, along with co-star Henry Wilcoxon, faced a challenge when a bull left an unexpected mess on the floor during the first and second takes of a seduction scene. Despite this unforeseen incident, she continued with professionalism, showcasing dedication to her craft. In Four Frightened People, she portrayed Judy Jones. During a bath sequence, a stand-in was used for long shots, wearing an Annette Kellerman bathing suit that covered all parts of the body. However, in the close-up shots, she appeared topless, providing a genuine and bold performance for the scene. This choice reflected her commitment to her roles and her willingness to push boundaries within the parameters of the film. In No Time for Love, she played Catherine Grant, and a 30-minute radio adaptation of the movie was broadcast on June 19, 1944, on the Screen Guild Theater. During this radio adaptation, she, along with co-star Fred McMurray, reprised their film roles, showcasing versatility in adapting performances across different mediums. Her ability to navigate unexpected challenges, her commitment to authentic performances, and her seamless transition between film and radio demonstrate her lasting influence on the entertainment industry. Her work continues to be appreciated by audiences and professionals alike.